Yeah, that's really good. Um, there's this language uh, that you use, which I really like that you, that you bring it back in, um, or that you don't hide from it. I guess is uh, absolute personality, and uh, I, I really like this language a lot. Can you help us with it? Like what? what so, so the the triune God is is absolute personality. Um, what what works being done by those words? What does that mean? Yeah, that deal with uh, that, especially from Bovink. Van Til there, there's zero originality on that. Right, right. Uh, because he's he's inheriting that from Bovink. A couple of ways to try to get at it. You could think of it this way. Um, when Van Til, uh, following Bovink, wants to speak of absolute personality, Bovink is insistent that God's unity is not abstract and impersonal. God's unity, rather, uh, um, expresses itself or exists. I shouldn't say expresses itself. God's unity exists in a threefold subsistence. Yeah. The Father subsists as the entire divine essence. The Son subsists as the entire divine essence. The Spirit subsists as the entire divine essence. And so there, there is no impersonal or abstract or non unity of God. That's that's point number one. Yeah. And by within the Trinity mean that God's unity is a tripersonal unity. Se the second thing, and I think Bavink says this, and A.A. Uh, A. Hodge says this in his commentary on the confession. And I think this is easily overlooked, but Bavink and Hodge, and Ventil picks up on this, say that God is a self-existent being, mm -hmm. a self-willing being, a self-conscious being. So it's not that there are these three independent centers of consciousness and will in God. That's tritheism. That's yeah. death. That's, yeah. that, that's a tremendous, that's a heresy. Rather, God in his unity knows, wills, and acts. Yes, there are terminal personal uh, uh, dimensions to his acting, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But in his unity, God is self-existent, self-conscious, and knows in the unity of his being. And Bavink especially says that is partly why we want to talk about an absolute personality. So when you put it all together, and I hint at this, don't hint at it, I think I say this, I uh, don't remember the page number, but I say that probably the fullest way to speak of absolute personality to avoid uh, confusion is an absolute triune mm -hmm. personality. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there, of course, we're wanting to affirm the unity of simplicity. We're wanting to affirm the incommunicable personal properties, the subsistent relations, and the coherent relations. All of those together help us understand that God is an absolute triune personality without committing our, the error of modalism yeah. on the one side, denying the personal distinctions, or without committing the error of tritheism on the other side, separating the persons and and uh positing some kind of mute essence or something like that yeah